Okay, so um, Dwayne, can you hear me? Yes. Very good. Well, Dwayne, um, welcome to Power Hour. Thanks so much. I do see your question here, and it's a good one. But before we dive into your question specifically, would you mind maybe giving me a little bit of background about who you are and where you're calling from? I'm calling from the Hudson Valley of New York State. Very good. And Dwayne, it is beautiful up there, I, I imagine. How are things going um, for you today? This time of year is my favorite. <laughs> Very good. Very good. And so, Dwayne, um, what brings you to the Rehab Power Hour today? My primary illness is lung cancer, which is now in remission. But I suffered metastatic tumors to my left parietal lobe, which has affected my right hand and arm. And what you are hearing is the aphasia, which is a part of the symptomatology. Okay. Now, Dwayne, um, when did this happen? In 2019 is when I had the craniotomy and radiation treatment for the metastatic tumors in my parietal lobe. And today I'm experiencing the effects of the post-radiation necrosis and edema, which actually presents as the very same symptoms as a stroke. Mm -hmm. Now, Duane, I may ask, what is your background? I am a clinical supervisor in behavioral health. Okay. You have a, um, there is a, there's a specific style of describing things that clinicians have. So I suspected that you might've been in the medical, um, the medical world. So um, very good. Um, and so I guess the question then for you is you have some um, residual impairments and is, um, are, are you doing rehab for them? I know you said 2019. Um, I imagine that, um, ho well, I guess hopefully, are they progressing or are you, are you kind of stabilized at your functional level? Well, unfortunately, I've had some setbacks because okay. the necrosis is still advancing. It has not plateaued yet. So okay. even though I did experience some, um, some good results from occupational therapy, seizure activity kind of wiped it all out. Okay, okay. So my challenge right now when considering whether to invest in the modus hand is whether the anatomical condition needs to be addressed before the functional uh, capacity can really be increased. This is this is a tough question, um, Dwayne. You're gonna you're gonna push me to a point where I don't think we have the scientific data to support one way or the other. Uh, it's a it's a good one, I think. Now. Let me, let me, let me sort of, I'll try to fall back on to the most relevant condition here. And that is where there is evolving neurologic damage in stroke. Um, if there is what's called hemodynamic instability, or if there is some ongoing problems, it can be detrimental to start rehab too soon. Um, that may be a bit of a surprise to most people here, but there are actually studies that have investigated this. And there is a period of time following acute injury or following ongoing, um, following ongoing injuries that if you start rehab too soon, you can actually have some detrimental effects. Now, that's, that's, a, that's a heavily qualified statement because that's a stroke and that's like active bleeding, these sorts of things. And the, uh, the penumbrum is still trying to um, sort of resolve and stabilize. But I imagine there's some corollaries with your situation, Dwayne. Um, that being said, I, I think we're probably outside of that window where those sorts of inflammatory responses are 
driving your your changes. You, it's it's provided your physicians have not given you any sort of um, contraindication to movement-based rehab, I think it would probably be okay to start. Now, I don't know, has, um, um, have your physicians given you kind of a thumbs up or thumbs down? Um, or are there any other sort of active contraindications that might um, uh, preclude you from starting a movement-based rehabilitation program? At the moment, there are no contraindications. In fact, um, I do expect to begin occupational therapy uh, within the next week. Um, okay. Okay. So I, I will kind of start from the very beginning. 